This video is strictly for educational purposes only. I do not condone or glorify the use of drugs. Yo, what is good? I'm Loki Fish, and in this video, I'll be covering this substance called Quaaludes. This is a sedative and hypnotic drug that was prevalent in the 1970s until it was promptly banned in the 1980s around most areas of the world. In recent times, conversations about the drug became mainstream again with the release of the movie The Wolf of Wall Street. I'll go over the effects, dangers, history, pharmacology, and everything else in between. Let's get into it. Quaalude is the brand name for the drug called methaqualone. Variously known as ludes or disco biscuits, methaqualone acts as a sedative and hypnotic and was popular in the 1970s with hippies and the disco club scene. Due to a crackdown in the 70s and 80s, it is almost non-existent now and is extremely rare to find. But before the ban, it was barely controlled and was super easy to come across and was a common alternative to barbiturates. It was used as a better alternative to alcohol due to it having similar recreational effects without killing your REM sleep as much or inducing a hangover the next day. Day. When compared to benzodiazepines, quaaludes are more euphoric and recreational. A light dose of methaqualone will give you a euphoric buzz, but taking too much will begin to yield a more of a body load and make your limbs feel all rubbery. Positive effects are pleasing tingling sensations, enhanced sex drive, and disinhibition. Negative effects include slurred speech, dizziness, nausea, restlessness, and headache. Common doses can give mental energy and stimulation, plus it can reduce inhibitions which may loosen up people's emotions or make them act more wild. Some people need Need to fight the urge off to sleep, but others can easily remain awake. It exhibits distinct functional properties as the GABA receptor sites in the brain and nervous system. The onset is 30 minutes and will last six to eight hours once the effects start. The peak of these effects lasts about four to five hours. Overdosing is possible and comes with the risk of seizures, comas, hemorrhages, or death. Psychological dependence may occur in extreme cases, but physical dependence has rarely ever been reported. Regarding the history, it was first synthesized in 1951 in India during research for a program looking for anti-malarial drugs. Four years later, it was proven to be hypnotic, meaning it induces sleep. In 1980, four tons of the drug was legally handed out, while roughly 100 tons were illicitly smuggled into the United States. An apparent route involved bulk powder being shipped to Colombia, which was then pressed into tablets and exported primarily to the US, which received 80% of the world's methaqualone. Much of it came through Texas and Florida. During this time, the DEA was issuing a campaign to give quaaludes a bad rep. All this negative media attention led to the decline in sales of quaaludes. Representatives working at the pharmaceutical firm who made the drug became very angry and claimed that it was a fine drug when used as indicated. They also tried to convince doctors that it was still safe and would buy advertisements encouraging physicians not to permit the abuse of illegal users. They even tried to counter the stigma behind quaaludes by selling it under a different name called McQuinn. In the early 1980s, the DEA said quaaludes was the most abused drug next to cannabis. This all ended up failing when the last company who made it stopped producing the drug in 1983. Ronald Reagan later placed methaqualine under Schedule 1 in 1984, blocking it from any more medical use. This is the same person who claimed cannabis to be the most dangerous drug in the world. Fast forward to the 1990s, quaaludes was no longer a top drug and today is essentially non-existent in most areas of the world. Exceptions do exist in India and South Africa where it is sold under different brand names. In South Africa, it is very popular, often coming in second to cannabis. More recently, a couple factors contribute to more interest in quaaludes. One being the Wolf of Wall Street in 2013, which prominently featured the drug, although many scenes in the movie over dramatize what it actually does to you. For example, the majority of people won't experience rolling around on the floor under the influence of the drug unless they combine it with other drugs or are straight up overdosing. The second factor contributing to the recurrence of recent interest is due to the reveal that Bill Cosby used quaaludes to facilitate acts of sexual violence. These days, quaaludes are so rare that they are considered to be extinct by most people. The most similar class of drugs that compare to quaaludes are probably benzodiazepines. One benzo that can be related to it is called clonazepam. Watch this video next to learn everything there is to know about K-pains and how the effects can be associated with quaaludes. My name is Fish and I stay low key. Remember to follow me on Instagram. Peace out.